part one, we touched on the history of the Santa Susana Field Lab and the toxic events that transpired there. So to better understand before you begin watching part two, if you haven't already, go back and catch up on the events in the part one video. Then come back here as we dissect the present day aftermath and the cleanup efforts that are still going on to this day at the lab. Backstories, ladies and gentlemen. After the 1994 federal investigation, Boeing would acquire Rockwell's Aerospace and Defense Unit, which included the Santa Susana property in 1996, and they were aware of the contamination at the time, but operations would still continue on the site. Rocket 9 ownership had changed hands, and the corporate red tape got worse. The Goliath just kept getting bigger because we started out with Rockwell owning it and they were big enough, but then you got Boeing, they're one of the biggest corporations in the world. Until research and development would finally seize all testing operations in 2006, well after decades of contamination have been done including over 17,000 rocket tests alone. And we saw on Secretary uh, Adams' face something change. A senior bureaucrat, a senior official, whose heart melted, and who then turned to her staff person and began to understand that what she had been told wasn't true, that the operator of the facility, which is Boeing, has very powerful lobbyists, had been able to, through her staff, which was fairly close to Boeing, get her to do something that she later, regret, later regretted. So she reversed course and committed to trying to get this site cleaned up. After this, a cleanup effort was proposed in 2007, but the initial efforts were disputed by Boeing itself. It's now owned by Boeing, one of the state's largest employers and a big contributor to California politicians, including Governor Brown. Even though Boeing didn't own it when most of the nuclear and rocket testing took place, as the current owner, they'd have to pay the millions of dollars it would take to fully clean it up with some help from NASA and the Department of Energy, which also used parts of the site. Did you sense Boeing was spending a lot of money to kill a full cleanup? Absolutely. They had formed a large ar army of lobbyists to do everything they could to stop cleanup to that level. It's been like a game of musical chairs, a former environmental aide to Governor Brown, a former head of the state EPA, and the former chief lawyer of the DTSC have all switched sides and worked on behalf of Boeing to kill a full cleanup of Santa Susana. It's a very smart and very evil strategy. The SB 990 was then signed in 2010, which was the official legislation by California to clean up the entire site. Boeing and its affiliates, the Department of Energy and NASA were officially ordered to do it as they operated there. But the reason for that is all because of potential health effects. And uh, Dr. Dodge is just gonna summarize for us um, uh, some of those implications. So as a result of the partial nuclear meltdown and other nuclear accidents, spills and releases, the Santa Susana Field Lab site is contaminated with radioactive materials such as strontium-90, cesium-137, plutonium-239, and tritium. Um, in 2012, the EPA released results of a radiation survey that showed 500 samples at the levels above ground, uh, background, uh, in some cases up to 1,000 times over background uh, levels. Uh, the National Academy of Sciences, which I always say, that's the, the scientists' scientists. Those are our top scientists in the country. And all federal radiation protection agencies uh, accepted the principle that there is no, no safe level of radiation. All doses, no matter how small, increase one's risk of cancer to some degree. Exposures to these radionuclides can cause cancers, uh, increased risks of heart disease, and a multitude of other problems. There can be a latency period of up to years or even decades after the exposure with the onset of the disease. In addition, rocket engine testing at the site and other activities at the Santa Susana lab have led to contamination by other chemically hazardous substances such as TCE and other volatile organic compounds. Also heavy metals such as mercury and lead, dioxins, perchlorate, PCBs, and more. The was never that prioritized and the local community would constantly fight to continue to clean up efforts ever since. The Department of Energy, NASA, and Boeing currently are responsible for the cleanup. Last December, the DOE at NASA 
agreed to clean up their portions to the highest of standards. But Boeing has not. It's suing the state of California because it feels the cleanup standards are unconstitutional. Boeing spokesperson Blake Jamison told us decades of extensive sampling have shown there is no evidence of contamination that has adversely affected the surrounding community. Government promised to clean it up and now politics looks like it may never get cleaned up and these people may remain at risk. Tonight in Simi Valley, many neighbors agree fines and cleanup efforts have been inadequate. What assurances can we give them that if they purchase this land to build their homes on or to keep this land for gardening or what have you, that it's safe. If you want to feel more protected, you need to get the site cleaned up so there's no longer a source. That's the rest of it. There's not much we can do. But to get rid of that source, that's the key thing that we have to do. The contamination on the hill that wants to go off and the hill. parents to everyone who knows about the situation. These evil corporations only care about their pockets and profits, and not the human life which it profits its pockets off of. Are you concerned contamination from that site is still spilling into neighborhood communities? I don't believe that there is a current exposure to communities. I don't know how anyone could be saying that. All the evidence I've seen shows there is a threat. We've done extensive soil sampling. We asked her to show us those recent soil tests, and instead, DTSE pointed us to documents like this one from a Boeing contractor that looked at old studies and determined that off-site contamination was not significant. And that's why I say you should never believe a company spokesperson. It's their job to save face, and it's also even more crazy to imagine such events actually happened right next to L.A. and kept secret for decades. Well, the, the thing about the radioactive isotopes is, is they're taken up by all living things as, as though they were essential life-giving uh, compounds. Uh, the, the strontium-90, the body looks at as potassium, I'm sorry, as, as calcium. So, and, and again, and that's actually where PSR, the physicians group, got their Nobel Peace Prize because uh, the release of atmospheric uh, strontium-90 from nuclear weapons tests released strontium-90, and it wasn't very long before American physicians found strontium-90 in the baby teeth of humans, okay? And so when human babies are having, uh, are radioactive in their teeth, later to go on to develop leukemias and things like that, it wasn't long before President Kennedy immediately signed unilaterally the, the, the limited test ban treaty. And that doesn't, that's not unique to nuclear weapons. It also, in this, in this nuclear meltdown and, and atomic uh, uh, reactions, you release the strontium-90. So all things that potentially use calcium, such as cows or cow's milk, gets contaminated. And there was a UCLA study that found an estimated 260 related cancer deaths directly associated DOE funded an independent study. Uh, UCLA did the work, and they found um, higher, higher death rates from blood, lymph, lymph cancers, and several other cancers. Um, and you, your own situation? Oh, my own situation. You mean my cancer? I was diagnosed in 1995 with a solid tumor and my doctors asked me where I worked and I said I worked at Atomics International and they said they were treating a lot of employees and they said don't forget brain cancer. They had a whole ward over at the hospital with Possibly brain more cancer. Possibly 60% chance of residents living within five miles of the facility to develop cancers and that reaches densely populated areas of the San Fernando and the land, Los Angeles County paid no attention to the nuclear installation just over the hill in Ventura County. Here's the man in charge of environmental quality. Have you ever been contacted by either the state or the federal government or anybody else about what was going on at Atomics no. International? Do you feel from the contacts that you've had in the last day or so that you should have been? Probably as a matter of information, it would, uh, it would have been nice. And it was also determined the radiation release was 458 times the amount of Three Mile Island accident in Pennsylvania, which is much more publicized by far. And what about the workers? How many of them got sick? Since Rockwell would employ over 6,000 at a time and led the entire San Fernando and Simi Valley in workforce. Well, this number, according to a former employee, will disturb you. We have uh, 3,800 workers who have filed claims for cancer. And how many do you think have gotten the claims? Um, only one third have been paid so out far. Of thousand, okay. Out of 3,800. Out of 3, what? 
3,800 employees caught cancer, all resulting from exposure after working this facility over the years. And what's even more disturbing is that more than half didn't even get compensated. In 2000, President Clinton signed a compensation program for all the Cold War workers. And this was a result of health studies done at different facilities throughout the country. They were all coming back with excess cancers. So in 2000, a program was uh, initiated for all the workers at 350 companies in America who did Cold War work. They didn't protect the workers. They didn't tell them what they were doing. They didn't warn them. Uh, and then when the workers got cancer and filed a lawsuit, the federal government fought them in court. So this new compensation program, the Energy Employees Compensation Act was passed. And um, so I, I was number 83, was my claim in the whole country. I got in early because I read about it in Seattle. Got my claim in, and by 2006, uh, I was denied. They, they had no data to deny me. They, what they have to do is do dose reconstruction. Well, they didn't have any data, so they used surrogate data from another facility. And they said, no, you didn't get 50% dose. Um, and I looked at the claims. We were the lowest compensated company in the whole country. Less than 10% of our workers were getting compensated. According to documents, there was also widespread illnesses in neighboring communities as a result of the release of the chemicals on the public from the rocket tests alone Contaminated with the radiation. Years. And thousands of rocket tests done at the lab left cancer-causing chemicals in the soil and water all over the site. Barbara Lee runs the Department of Toxic Substances Control, or DTSC which is in charge of getting toxic sites cleaned up. Is this site seriously contaminated? The site has a lot of contamination. Contamination that, according to this federally funded study, has moved into neighboring communities and might have been inhaled by residents. Those chemicals don't stay on the mountain. It's the population is below the site. And also the contaminated water outflow where plutonium would be found in water wells up to two miles away. 116 times toxic materials have migrated off site, okay, when they were picked up by rainwater and transported uh, into contaminated levels at areas in excess of recognized pollution limits. That is to say, levels deemed by regulators to be safe for public or the environment. <clears throat> contaminated groundwater has also migrated off site. The facility is on the hills above and, uh, above, and the contamination flows down to the, the city below. It is therefore extremely important from a health standpoint that all contamination that can be found is cleaned up so as to protect people and the environment from this radioactive and toxic pollution. Boeing has claimed on its website that it has implemented an extraction treatment system, but in reality, it doesn't even look like they started using it functionally. The majority of samples collected showed just background or normally occurring levels of radiation. But 11 samples showed significantly elevated levels of radioactive materials. The worst sample was found nine miles from the field lab in Thousand Oaks at 19 times above normally occurring levels of radiation. For years, doctors have told the I-Team they're concerned about radiation. On November 8, 2018, the Woosley Canyon fire would start in the same area as the Santa Susana Field Lab with high winds scorching. We're showered with radioactive ash and dust from the 2018 Woolsey fire. This is contrary to what state officials told us three years ago. The massive fire, you might recall, started at the contaminated Santa Susana Field Lab, a former nuclear and rocket test site that has been the subject of ongoing investigation by our I-team, called LA's Nuclear Secret. Now Joel Grover has obtained a new study that shows high levels of radioactive contamination settled onto homes miles from the burning field lab. And it's reported that 80% of the contaminated area was burned until it was contained 10 days later on November 18th. And many would say kicked up a radioactive dust and spread throughout the San Fernando Simi Valley and Thousand Oaks. And this will be confirmed through soil testing where 360 dust and ash samples were collected from the fire zone of 150 homes as well as parks and trails as the samples were found to have the same radioactive isotopes as the field lab Colleen itself. Chuck, there is mounting evidence that the fire started at the Santa Susana Field Lab, about 1,300 feet 
from the site of a partial nuclear meltdown back in 1959. It's an area that is still highly contaminated with radioactive waste. Aerial video captured by Chopper 4 just minutes ago shows smoke rising from power lines at the Santa Susana Field Lab. The same area that was in flames when the Woolsey fire started on Thursday afternoon. The state fire agency has said the fire originated around E and Alpha streets in Simi Valley. That's where these wires are located and near where a nuclear meltdown occurred nearly 60 years ago, contaminating the earth with radiation. When the fire began, the state said it appeared there was no risk to people living nearby. But at a town hall meeting last night in Woodland Hills, people living near the field lab demanded an independent investigation. Will there be an independent investigation of the air, smoke and ash? The DTSC, Department of Toxic Substance and Control, once again downplayed a situation, but no one bought it. Just days after the Woolsey fire started, the State Department of Toxic Substances Control, or DTSC, issued this statement saying, we do not believe the fire has caused any releases of hazardous materials associated with contamination at the site. Did you believe DTSC when they said, don't worry about the ash from the fire? No, sign a I wanted to, but agreement. no, we were outnumbered. According to internal emails we obtained, Boeing lobbyists were privately meeting with DTSC staffers to influence the cleanup requirements. There are those that think your agency is too cozy with Boeing. I haven't seen it and I've looked for it. NASA would also be ordered to do its job in the cleanup efforts to demolish the test stands they used at Rocket Dine since 1973. However, they were also hesitant to do this just to preserve NASA's legacy and natural habitats in the area which have long been disturbed. Um, they claim it will destroy vast amounts of priority natural habitat. The truth is, again, quite different. The contamination is found primarily at the former operational areas, which long ago were disturbed. Badly disturbed, all these reactors and reac rocket test stands and operated them so sloppily for so many decades. It would be nice if the people who had operated this facility had tried to protect it, but in fact, they were polluting it for decades and only now are somehow claiming they're concerned about the environment. Many believe, along with Boeing, NASA made fake grassroots groups to derail cleanup efforts and paid off government officials to help their cause. The Boeing company, with more than $80 billion in revenue per year, has hired a team of well connected lobbyists to try to get out from under the cleanup obligations, which would save them a fair amount of money. You've heard how a company, euphemistically calling itself Renewable Resources Group, for which the principal and general counsel is Charlie Stringer, who also happens to be the chair of the water board that enforces Boeing's permit, um, and a colleague of Charlie Stringer's, Tom Eisenhower, are alleged to have um, admitted that they work for Boeing. Um, the uh, concern is that they've been doing that to try to create an AstroTurf group to try to push for no cleanup. And so a number of myths about the cleanup have been spread by Boeing and its surrogates. And you may have heard a few of them. And so my presentation is to try to deal factually with those claims. Which if you thought about it, it would make no sense for these residents to actually start these preservation groups themselves because they can't even visit the site, along with all the cancer proof and already large amount of locals who have made a lifelong effort to clean it all up by constantly pressuring the government to do its job and due diligence so I don't know who they thought they were fooling. NASA even went as far as to try to make the site a historical national park for Native American artifacts, which was an attempt to exempt themselves in Boeing from a full cleanup. They want to clean up almost none of it. Dan Hirsch is a University of California nuclear policy instructor who's been fighting for decades to get Santa Susana cleaned up. He's examined Boeing's latest cleanup proposal.
Boeing is proposing that it only have to clean up something on the order of a few percent of the contamination. Is there any chance there will not be a full cleanup? Well, we haven't determined what the cleanup levels will be. Boeing even hired a PR firm which devised this 2012 strategy obtained by the I-Team. It says Boeing should target media, including KNBC, and convince them the site poses no significant risk to human health today, even though this federally funded study in 2007 found much higher cancer rates in the suburbs close but to... But fortunately, the National Park Service denied all that and all the buildings would eventually be demolished just last month in October 2021. The last Cold War era building in Semi Valley is no more. The U.S. Department of Energy says it completed the safe demolition of the last of its energy technology engineering centers. It had been a part of cleanup activities at the Santa Susana Field Laboratory. And that also raises concerns because it kicks up dust and some fear it could spread more toxins out and also about rainfall coming and eventually washing it down the hill. And over the years, Boeing has stated that its overall end goal is to make the site an open space habitat for wildlife. But Boeing has been moving at snail pace the whole time and constantly avoids responsibility on its behalf and that's all because you guessed it. They don't want to pay a reported $1.5 billion to get the job done. And suburban residential standards using EPA's default assumptions or those in DTSC's standardized risk methodology. Here are the numbers. If Boeing got its way, the numbers it's pushing would leave 400 times more arsenic in the soil than if you did a true okay. suburban residential cleanup. From ethyl mercury, 5,800 times more. For hexavalent chromium, that's the material you all remember from um, Aaron Brockovich, right? Chrome 6. That would be 658 times higher if Boeing gets its way. Dioxins, 640. One and PCBs no, doing noxious much. stuff to there was, there was 477 no times higher levels. There's no level on that. Amazing if they can pull it off. As a recent, they released this statement. We remain resolute in our commitment to perform a comprehensive and fully protective cleanup, and they will restrict Boeing's property so it will never be used for residential, commercial, industrial, or agricultural purposes. We're still hoping Boeing will sit down and speak with us. You can read Boeing's full statement on our special LA's nuclear secret website. Despite the demolishing, all the soil still remains, which cleanup has barely started on, just for petty attempts to clinch to save that 1.5 billion. Boeing and its surrogates have been, however, pushing a claim that they should get rid of the cleanup agreements and replace it with what they are calling a suburban residential cleanup level. But it's actually not the suburban residential cleanup level. When you compare it to EPA's suburban cleanup, suburban residential cleanup goals that I just showed you, Boeing would leave behind 194 times more cesium, 545 times more strontium, and put your seat belts on, 916 times more plutonium than EPA's suburban residential. So they call, hey, let's clean up to suburban residential, but it's not. It's hundreds and nearly a thousand times less protective. Why would you do that? You could save a lot of money if you relax the standard. NASA also said its plan now was to demolish the former liquid oxygen plant, which they did, and to excavate 450 acres of soil on their side as well, but that part hasn't happened yet because they're also moving at a snail pace. They say that they are using trucks authorized to carry toxic material and move a little at a time to an out-of-state facility disposal license to receive a degree, but at the same time claim they have a trucking problem. The first has to do with trucks and soil volumes. Boeing and its surrogates have been trying to scare people about trucks, claiming unbelievable numbers of trucks for immense periods of time in order to do the cleanup. The reality, however, is quite different. NASA estimates that the soil cleanup of its portion of Santa Susana would entail about three to four truck shipments per hour during work hours and work days for a period of a little less than two years. If they can do on-site treatment 
of some of the waste, it would be three shipments an hour. If they can't, it would be four shipments an hour. Because there are several routes that those trucks can uh, be put onto, that would mean about one truck per hour per route. NASA estimates that this would result in an increase of a few tenths of 1% in the traffic on those main routes. And that's taking into account um, a correction factor for a truck being more of a problem than regular cars, so they count a truck as multiple cars. So a few tenths of 1% increase in traffic. The cleanup of the Department of Energy area should be roughly comparable to that of the NASA area. It's long been estimated that the DOE and NASA cleanup volumes should be about the same. But recently, um, the people hired by Boeing to help them try to get out of the cleanup agreement have pushed wildly inflated estimates of the cleanup of chemicals of the DOE part of the property, many times higher than those estimates put before. The Southern California Federation of Scientists carefully examined these new estimates and found them to be grossly inflated. Also, controversial California Governor Newsom has came under fire for allegedly allowing Boeing and the DTSC to hold secret meetings in order to halt the cleanup efforts to save money and leave up to 99% of the contamination on site. 100% would get cleaned up if the agreement is followed. If Boeing's supposed suburban residential standard were followed, 1.9% would get cleaned up. And that's optimistic because they are also insisting on being able to average. So if I've got one spot that is elevated they want, and another spot a half mile away that's not, they want to not clean up the hot spot. So Boeing's proposed cleanup levels compared to the levels in so the cleanup agreements yeah, are ready to go. like you, 48 you times to higher than background for cesium and for strontium 480 times higher for the suburban residential standard. And before Newsom was elected, he actually promised to make this cleanup effort a top priority. <laughs> but of course, everything that guy says, you gotta expect the total opposite, as shown by all his actions throughout the pandemic and recall. And with the absence of the DTSC's enforcement, it's clear as day that the corporation has captured lawmakers and regulators who are working for the polluter rather than the health of the tax-paying Californians. And I think it's clear as day Boeing, NASA, and the Department of Energy, and everyone else who holds weight for their pockets want to delay the cleanup and save as much money as possible. So the bottom line is that the cleanup to background is essentially cleanup to the EPA suburban residential standard. But Boeing is pushing a standard which is hundreds to thousands of times, to a thousand times less protective. So fundamental question, if Boeing got its way and its surrogates got their way, uh, how much cleanup would occur? My students, and some of you heard their presentation in June, went and compared every one of the 500 locations or so where EPA found radioactive contamination at the site and compared it to what Boeing has been pushing for its cleanup standards. And virtually none of the radioactive contamination EPA found would get cleaned up if Boeing got its way. If the cleanup agreements are carried out, all would get cleaned and up. And it's been 14 long years after originally being ordered to clean up in 2007, which was also projected to be finished by 2017. But here we are in 2021 and it seems that it's just beginning, or has So, what's the conclusion? Parties that are responsible for the contamination, like Boeing, but also the agencies that they have so much control over, like DOE and NASA, could save a lot of money if they and their surrogate, surrogates can scare people into opposing the cleanup that is the only thing that can protect you from their contamination. But their claims are false. The so-called suburban residential standard is hundreds to thousands of times more lax than EPA's suburban residential goals. Boeing and the government contaminated the site. 
they must meet their obligations to clean up the toxic mess. Very little has been done overall. However, with all the buildings being now just demolished, progress might actually be picking up. And there's groups and communities that continue to push the government every day. Also, MSNBC is releasing a documentary called In the Dark of the Valley on November 14th. Just like a week after this drops and I encourage everyone to see it. Eventually, I'm sure it'll be clean, but I can tell you this, you won't find me anywhere near this area, and you shouldn't either for your own health and safety. Backstories, ladies and gentlemen.